if you look at the anticipated load forecast 15 years from now, we're going to need to build and invest in that same number of megawatts that it's taken us 100 years to build. We're going to have to do that in 15 years. And that's going to take a tremendous investment, not only power generation, but also in modernizing the grid to ensure once we generate those electrons, we can deliver them under long distances very efficiently to those end users. This is Horizons, stories about what's next in the world, powered by Compass Data Centers. A couple of generations from today, when they go back and they look at 2025, they're going to say 2025 was the start of a energy revolution. And it's not that different than the industrial revolution that happened in the late 18th, early 19th century, where you saw things like the loom, the cotton gin, the steam engine that powered our factories and boats and ships that transformed the industry during that industrial revolution. I think where we are today, we're in a similar type of energy revolution, where innovations in technology are being brought about, whether it's new nuclear, fusion, AI and how AI is gonna bring about ways we manage the grid differently. I am most excited about the innovation that we're seeing today and what's yet to come. And I truly think we've only scratched the surface. And the future generations are gonna look back and say maybe 2025, yeah, that's the year that the energy revolution began. And it's tremendously exciting to be a part of that. I'm Todd Flowers, I'm the Director of Power Generation Business Development. It's our responsibility to acquire, develop all the new power generation to serve our customers to power their every day. Upon graduating from nuclear engineering school, I started working for our public utility and spent the first 16 years of my career supporting our nuclear fleet. And then about 11 years ago, I started in power generation. Now I support the development of various power generation technologies uh, kind of across the board. Grid modernization is developing and employing advanced technologies to make the grid more reliable, more efficient, safe, to allow it to deliver increasingly larger amounts of energy. If we really want to transform the grid and the energy that is brought to the grid to supply customers, it's going to take a collaboration between utilities and large end users. These are significant investments that need to be made. A lot of them are first-of-a-kind technologies. And with anything, those first movers, they're going to be more expensive. Making those investments may be a little bit more risky. You need to demonstrate the technology. So it's those large end users who have a, a need for carbon-free generation that can really come together with power producers to come up with collaborative solutions through innovative financing and partnerships to bring these technologies to fruition. The grid is very complex. When it was first established, typically power generation was one direction. You had centralized power stations that delivered energy to customers. Today, it's gotten a lot more complicated. We have distributed energy resources. We have the integration of renewables. So it's a very complex structure. And there are a lot of challenges to modernizing the grid. When people plug in a hairdryer or turn on the light switch, they just expect it to work. But to make that happen is very complex. Everything from siting and developing new power generation technologies to delivering those electrons through a substation, through a power line, to their house, it's very complex. But people are becoming more and more educated about power generation and power delivery, and they're getting access to data today that we've never had before. Information can help people better manage how they use energy to become more efficient, to determine when is the best time to charge their electric vehicle, to better manage how they're using energy can give them the power to have more informed decisions in their own use and to not only lower their costs, but to really lower their environmental impact because they're using less energy. There's sometimes a misconception where any new facility is gonna require the investment in a new transmission line. And that's not necessarily the case. There are technologies like grid enhancing technologies that can allow us to deliver more energy more reliably using existing infrastructure. One is dynamic line rating. So with dynamic line rating, you can take real-time data, say the ambient temperature, the wind flow, and actually 
deliver more energy than you otherwise would under a traditional uh, line limit. Take, for example, if you compare it to traffic. Dynamic line rating would say, you know, instead of requiring that the speed limit be 50 miles per hour, if there were a clear day where visibility is really good, you know, we can go 60 miles per hour and you can do so safely. Things like advanced power flow control devices that can direct energy in the system more efficiently. Topology optimization. It's like the, the ways of the electric grid, where it is a, a platform that utilizes all the assets in our system to more efficiently deliver energy to end customers. So through these technologies, you can actually increase the amount of energy that we can deliver to customers without the need to necessarily build new transmission infrastructure. Nuclear power is getting a lot of attention right now because it's recognized as an energy source that's available around the clock. If you look at carbon-free generation, there are not a whole lot of options. And a lot of the carbon-free generation is intermittent. Wind and solar, they contribute very importantly to our resources that are available to power the grid. But nuclear power is different. It's around the clock. It can be dispatchable. It delivers energy when needed, and it's carbon free. You can also produce a tremendous amount of energy on a pretty small footprint. And with small module reactors, a lot of siting flexibility. So you can place these facilities in locations where you necessarily couldn't place a traditional centralized nuclear power plant. And it's being recognized as an important element to decarbonizing the grid because of the amount of energy that's created, that's carbon free, around the clock. And it's based on over five decades of science and technology. You know, when I talk to localities uh, across the Commonwealth of Virginia about the potential for small modular reactors, there's a lot of excitement. Even in rural Virginia, people look at new nuclear, not with skepticism, but with opportunity. You know, you hear a lot about large end users, but there are benefits to, to everyday customers, the residential customer. Grid modernization will help improve reliability in the system, reduce power outages. Smart meters will give us real-time data. Uh, this information can be used by end user to determine how and when they use energy. Are there better ways to do that? AI can help end users be more efficient in how they use energy. Some parts of the country have dynamic pricing where end users can charge their electric vehicles at times of the day that come at a lower cost. So this amount of data, um, the use of smart meters will provide customers the ability to, to manage energy in ways that are more efficient. And with that comes a lower environmental impact and a lower cost. I think the most exciting thing about this energy revolution we're in today is just the amount of opportunity that it provides. Um, whether it be addressing climate change, whether it be helping with the affordability of electricity, or providing opportunities. The energy industry is at a very exciting moment, and I think the innovation and technology development is tremendous.